I was born in Oklahoma City. Uh, I am a proud daughter of Ardmore, so I grew up in Ardmore. And I had a very um, interesting childhood, to say the least, a very tumultuous one. Um, grew up from very humble beginnings and really had to um, hold fast to my faith, uh, to my studies, which I excelled in, uh, to family, to pave my path. My grandmother raised me and uh, I am blessed to still have her here with me. She's nearly 90 years old and, and as the matriarch of the family, really set the tone and the standard for our way of, of living. And so she instilled in me the value of faith, family, and freedom, freedom of choices, making sure that we um, were honest and ethical and intentional in everything that we did. And despite uh, limited resources and means that my siblings and I didn't let that deter us or stop us from setting goals for ourselves, from dreaming big dreams and understanding that we could accomplish anything that we set our minds to if we worked hard, if we persevered through the challenges, if we didn't make excuses, if we didn't feel sorry for ourselves. There were plenty of uh, days and nights where I wondered as someone um, who you know, who grew up from very humble beginnings. And when you think about kind of the disparities and the challenges people from underserved communities come from, I never shy away from the fact that I could probably check off a dozen or so boxes, if not more. And as a child, I never understood that because I, I well, am I not worthy to have the same, you know, childhood that my peers have and uh, the, the, the family dynamic? And so you don't understand those things. But what I will tell you is I've always had um, an eternal optimism and so uh, in, in a high aptitude for education. I consider myself a lifelong learner. So I will, um, I love to, to learn and expand my knowledge. And so I excelled in school and put my studies first. And I believe that all the experiences that I um, had through education, I mean, education for me truly has been the great equalizer because it has opened up the doors of so many opportunities and it's really transcended, transcended my life into such that my children's lives look very different. Yes, I had um, challenges, but my grandmother was so careful to take excellent care, you know, of my siblings and I and really get us involved into the um, community. Armour's a very small town and so she rallied support. You know, we, we, we really did have community support in terms of what I was exposed to and the opportunities that I was afforded because I um, showed a high aptitude for education and excelled and, and really wanted to um, not only have a positive outlook, but someone who, I, I believe that, I, that I'm someone who at that time as a child just, was just willing to try all sorts of, of, of activities and I've never been fearful um, despite, you know, kind of some of the hectic and, and chaotic or the chaotic nature of my childhood. And so um, through education, you know, graduated from Ardmore um, High School, a proud, you know, tiger. <laughs> and I was very much involved. Um, I worked part time uh, throughout high school and even into college. And so I matriculated into the University of Oklahoma, where um, I feel that my, uh, the, the horizons, if you will, the my lens was uh, expanded exponentially because the University of Oklahoma did such a phenomenal job of taking this small town, you know, girl, if you will, and helping foster and build my 
um, passion for education, but passion for service. So I was a proud student ambassador in Crimson Club under President David Bourne. There were a lot of uh, faculty and staff members that were invested in my success. And so I was able to do so many great things at OU. And, and of course, when I graduated, um, moved to California, took a, took a job out there and, and lived out there for a while. And uh, my husband and I got married and I moved to Ohio to, because he went to work for um, a law firm there. And then he was recruited by McAfee Taft to come back to Oklahoma. And so um, we came back in 2006, um, both being from here and um, the, the rest is history. It, it really has been tremendous um, what we've been able to accomplish together as a unit, as a family, and what we've been able to, to do for our children, the examples that he and I have both set uh, for our children. And so um, have spent my entire professional career, with the exception of that brief stint um, in California, I've spent my entire professional career really serving um, this great state by virtue of being an administrator in the nonprofit and education sectors. And life has been very meaningful. It has been full. I look back at my experiences and I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for the hardships. I'm grateful for um, the hills and valleys, the trials and tribulations and the triumphs because I don't think that I would have this this burning desire to uh, serve, to give every waking moment to ensuring people whose backgrounds and experiences mirror mine, uh, to ensure that they have opportunities to achieve whatever it is they want to achieve and that they don't feel limited by um, you know, their circumstances. Because as children, as youth, as even teenagers and some young adults, there are a lot of things you just don't understand. But now that I'm on the other side of that, there was purpose in every bit of, every single experience I went through. And so to be at this place um, in this moment in time, it, it is an overwhelming sense of accomplishment and something that I don't take for granted and I don't take it lightly. And um, my heart is filled with joy at the opportunity to be of greater service to the state. I think there were a litany of people that poured into me over the years. I really talk a lot about mentorship and the value of it. You know, first things first, starting with the, the, the matriarch of my family, you know, and my mom and dad, they certainly um, did the very best they could you know, my grandmother's filled in the gap so much, but she, starting with her, she set the tone. You know, no excuses. Um, you can do anything you want to do. You have to have the right mindset when you, when you want to do these things. And so she really set the tone. And then, of course, over the years, just the various mentors that I have in various capacities, they have, um, you know, spoken into my life, shared pearls of wisdom, helped me on my journey, we never get to where we are in life alone. I've had coworkers, I've had colleagues, I've had bosses, you know, close friends that have really walked alongside me, as we all do, hopefully, um, in life. And so, family members, my 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 husband, my children, you know, you, you don't get to this place alone. And I, and I believe that we're ever evolving and ever growing. Um, that's something that, that's ju that just happens the longer you live. And so I really believe that I've just continued to evolve over the years, but in doing so, I credit a great deal of my success to people who believed in me, you know, who were champions for me and who not only gave me opportunities, but helped facilitate my success through those various opportunities that, I, that I've been afforded. I tried my hand at fast food and they needed um, uh, immediacy. <laughs> and I'm very purposeful, you know, and methodical. And so it was like, you need to hurry up, <laughs> get this stuff done. 
So let's just say I wasn't successful in fast food because I, I, I was trying to keep up with the pace and you know do everything that needed to be done. And so it was just you know, all over the place. But I ended up landing at Walmart. And I, I worked at Walmart as a cashier. And so they would have me um, go and do zoning in different departments and also um, serve as, a, as, the, as the door greeter at Walmart. And I remember when I would have to go and, and serve, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's gonna take forever because you're standing there greeting everybody and you just keep looking at your clock and you're like, oh, or you're to watch at the time. And you're like, I'm gonna be here all night. <laughs> and so I worked part-time during the school year because I was, I was very involved in a lot of activities, a lot of school activities. And so, and leadership, different leadership um, organizations. And so I worked part-time at Walmart uh, during high school. I worked part-time during the school year um, and then um, full-time during the summer. And when I went away to college, I think I came back for maybe a summer or two and worked. And then I finally, um, you know, left. But it was great and it helped me, you know, build some customer service skills <laughs> because I had to do so many, so many different jobs, you know, whenever I worked there. But I, that, that, that took me way back. So <laughs> that's why you kind of have me chuckling like, oh, my goodness, I tried fast food and I wasn't successful there. <laughs> and so then I went to Walmart and Walmart was 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 incredible. I have a bachelor's in journalism from the University of Oklahoma a very proud um, graduate of the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication. I have an MBA from the University of Phoenix at San Diego, their San Diego campus, and that was a tremendous program to, and, and a tremendous undertaking as well. And I have a doctor, um, I have a doctorate in education from Vanderbilt University, from their prestigious Peabody College of Education. Receiving accolades for doing what I love to do is, you know, it's an honor. And it feels good when people stop to recognize you for the work that you do, that you really care about, um, and the passion that you have. Because anyone that knows me knows I'm a very passionate per person, a very passionate person. I hope um, in some small way that the, that the accolades and, and all of those things and, and the positions and the titles and all of that I'm doing work that I love to do. I hope it inspires anyone and everyone from all walks of life and helps people to understand that no matter their, their position or their place in life or their struggles or their challenges or their trials and their tribulations, there is hope. There is always hope. And when you think people aren't watching, they are. When you think people don't notice, they do. I've been very blessed and fortunate to serve children, youth, teens, young adults, and even um, seasoned adults by, the, by virtue of the uh, nonprofits that I've, that I've served. I've been able to touch a lot of people uh, professionally, personally, civically, and for me that's what it's about. If one person is inspired after interacting with me, then my work on this earth is done. There's not a tear when it comes to um, the different awards that I've received because I think that when an organization or an entity decides they want to recognize someone for their work, you honor that, you respect that and you appreciate that. Because my life looked so different, it's almost a, almost a surprise when I get these different accolades because that's not my intent in life. My intent is to help others and to serve others. And um, it's quite simple for me. So when organizations reach out and they want to recognize me for something I've done or recognize kind of a culmination of the work that I've done um, not only do I consider it a blessing, but it's, 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 it, it means the world to me because, again, my goal is to inspire and to give hope um, and to be a light. 
And I think a lot of that, again, it's, I know where it stems from. It stems from having to work incredibly hard for every single thing that I have in this life. Incredibly hard. And so I just don't take those types of things for granted. You know, I, I really embrace them and wholeheartedly thank the organizations that took time um, to honor and recognize my contribution uh, to the world. There are some organizations that, that do ask you to, to explain, and that's very difficult for me. Um, the beautiful thing is, you know, when you send in your CV, the CVs are very straightforward. But when you have to write about yourself, it does take time. You know, anytime you ask someone, you know, it's like I can be this content expert in, in everything, in education and, you know, community development in everything about my children, my family, just everything, you know, meaningful. But when you have to talk about yourself, it is more of a challenge to have to think about um, the things that you want to say and share. But I will say this, the words come easy to me. And I think that when you're genuine and sincere in your efforts, you, yes, having to force yourself to sit down and do it is, can, be, it can be challenging with not having very many hours in the day to, to be able to sit down and think about yourself and the things you've done. But having to explain your position and those things, that, those, those types of uh, things come easy for me because it's, it's, it's me speaking from the heart. I think people in general um, have faced scrutiny when it comes to certain appointments, opportunities, promotions, jobs, and that scrutiny comes for a variety of reasons. I've learned not to give a whole lot of mental space to the scrutiny or the feeling like I have to explain myself because when you have worked in the trenches and you've poured every ounce of yourself into your work and you've been blessed to lead teams and have had um, leaders believe in you I think, and one of um, my friends said it best, and she is no longer with us, she said, let the work you do speak for you. Let the work you do speak for you. And when she first said those words to me, it, 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 those words are just impactful. Let the work you do speak for you. And that has been, um, really my approach to the things that, that you're mentioning. Oh my goodness, how could you not be attracted to OCCC? OCCC is amazing. It is a beautiful community and just this unique blend of, of cultures, of people from all walks of life, the mission um, the mission is, is straightforward, you know, um, student success, community enrichment. How could you not be attracted to that? Ensuring that students have what they need, working alongside a dedicated faculty, dedicated uh, staff members, um, the governance is exceptional through and through. When I contemplated the journey um, toward obtaining uh, the presidency or certainly my pursuit, I'm very purposeful in where, where I, um, where my career path leads. It's important to me because you spend so much of your life invested in an organization, invested in, in the people that it serves, invested in 
elevating its brand and its mission. And so I was, when I learned more about the position and the expectations, I said, this fits me to a T. How could I not want to go and lead and be of greater service and impact more lives than what I'm doing you know, now? How could I not want to go and do more? And so I believe that OCCC, the role of the president beautifully lined up with the work that I've done throughout my entire career. So it was an easy decision to pursue the path. Um, the campus community, I mean, the campus is beautiful. When you go and interact with the students and the faculty and the staff, they are excited about the work that they engage in every single day. They love the work that they do. And so it was just a no brainer. And then once um, I got there and, and, and you know, I've been there now um, for a while, you can't fake warmth. You can't fake sincerity and, and genuineness. And that has been my experience from the leadership from our governance to our executive leadership team all the way down. Um, faculty, staff, students, people are thrilled to be there. And my goal is that OCCC is not a choice, but it's the choice. You know, that um, we will accomplish everything that we set out to um, through this spirit of exceptionalism that I talk about. Um, and, and we'll do it as one. We'll do it united as one OCCC. The pandemic brought about a lot of nuances um, that we as a society had to navigate, and not only in the higher education space, but in general, in all sorts of industries. And I think that higher ed is no different. You know, we have to be forward thinking and innovative in our approach, and um, we have to anticipate challenges. No one would have ever thought we would be navigating, navigating a pandemic because it, we had, you know, for the most part, we haven't had to do that before. Certainly not, not risen. you know, we, we just, we haven't had to do that. And so I think higher ed has to continue to be forward thinking, innovative, responsive to industry, and ensuring that students have resources and support uh, to get them to degree attainment. Becoming a mother, so, so I think people think that people, there's kind of this notion that you can't do both or you can't do it all. And you know, I don't, my experience has been different. I can't speak for everyone when I say this, I can only speak for my experience, but becoming a mother, I already have this burning desire to be of service, but once I became a mother, you know, a mother of, of three, it's almost as if the, the fire you know, it was just, it's, you know, someone took, <laughs> took some oil and like threw it on the fire because it just ignited uh, the passion that I have for being of service and for ensuring that people have what they need to, to be successful in life. Being a mother really helped me. Uh, it forced me to be intentional about my time, deliberate about the relationships that I have, uh, ensuring that when I take on a role, that it's going to be good for me, my children, and my family, that you know, family's going to be welcome to be on this journey with me because I don't get to turn motherhood off. And so being a mother really strengthened, I believe, my professional stance because you have to be able to navigate uncertain situations. You can't predict 
but you have to anticipate uh, any problems or challenges or things that could, you know, happen or, or, you know, when things go well and when they go wrong, you have to anticipate all those things. And so being a mother, being a parent, being responsible for other lives, to me, strengthened my professional stance. It strengthened my ability to discern, to use judgment, to use that maternal instinct, if you will, in the work that I do. Certainly as it pertains to engaging with students and making sure that, that their needs are heard and that I'm responsive as best I can be to those needs. So I believe that, um, that motherhood, not only is it a beautiful journey, but it should be embraced. It has made my walk, my professional walk, an even stronger, more meaningful walk. When you have a passion for service, you almost can't turn it off because it's who you are. And so the work that you engaged in, the work that I engaged in, it's a labor of love, but it's meaningful. And it's what drives us and it's what keeps us going. And you can't turn it off. I don't get to turn any of it off. But you know what? I kind of sort of don't want to. Um, there has to be a balance, obviously. But everything that you mentioned is paramount. We, one thing that really matters to me is um, being a woman, being a woman of color, being a mother, being a wife, being a community servant. I wear so many hats, but it's important for people to see that they too can wear those hats and still accomplish greatness. That they too can wear those hats and there not be any limits to what they can go on to achieve. And so I was always taught one of the things that I hold very near and dear to me that my grandmother instilled in me is she said, you can do anything you want to do in this life, anything. And I've always believed that. We have to uplift others. We have to share um, more positive stories of triumphs. When you do that, you never know what people have gone through. And one of the things that I've started becoming more comfortable with, I was not always comfortable sharing my story because it's a very painful story. There are things I've had to overcome and work through that nobody will ever understand. But as I started to share my story, and when people tell me, you know, something you said really resonated with me because it gave me hope. Something you said, you know, inspired me because I've been through, uh, I've been down a, a, a similar path or our journeys align. And listening to you speak and, and be open and honest about it helped me put my fears aside and keep forging ahead. And that's what it's about. That's what it's about for me, certainly, is, again, no matter your walk, no matter your position in life, no matter your circumstances, you can, you can do whatever it is you want to do in this life. And that's what I would say to anyone. That's certainly how my husband and I are raising our children. We're raising them to be fearless in that pursuit and to be unapologetic and to not let people try to put you in boxes. That is something that I totally dealt with as being someone from poverty. I was often marginalized. Oh no, you, you can only do this from certain people, not the community as a whole. And so I had to work through those things and prove people wrong. And it wasn't even about people, it was I believed in being so steadfast on my journey that I wasn't going to let the naysayers or the obstacles block me from doing the work that was instilled in me to do. And I think when you block out the noise, all the nonsense can remain nonsense because there's a lot of noise you have to block out along the way. You just have to block it out and not let it reign supreme in your life and know that it has no place and be steadfast on your path. You know, I have been blessed with an amazing husband. 
Bernard and I are partners, you know. We're partners on our journey and we share in the parenting. And we share um, in the leadership of our household and making sure that our children see a unified front, that they have love and support, that they feel, feel very uh, built up. My faith is very important to me and I will never shy away from that. My faith has guided me my entire life and God has blessed me with tremendous opportunities. I don't take it lightly. But Bernard is, is, a, is a true partner. He and I um, have really grown. I mean, we've been friends for 26 years and married 17 years. And so um, we both take our work serious our parenting serious, um, the service that we give to the community, but we complement each other. So um, he has been a strong advocate and supporter of mine, and it ebbs and flows because there have been times where it was the Bernard Jones show, <laughs> where we had to be on the scene and do all of these things. And so um, there, ha there have been, been those times, and, and, and a lot of those times, but then there are times when it's, you know, things that we have to attend to support me. And so we just divide and conquer. We divide and conquer together. Uh, because again, we're setting an example and certainly leaving a legacy, creating a legacy for our children. <laughs> no, that has not crossed my mind. I can, I can say that. Um, you will find this funny. So my uh, youngest, the baby of the family, he's six. I have three children, six, eight, and, and 13, two boys and the girls right in the middle. And so he was learning to read and he had my business card and he looked at my business card and he said, Matra Jones. And it's so cute how he says my name. He said, Matra Jones. And he saw vice. So he said, Matra Jones, vice president Vice President of the United States. <laughs> and it said Langston University, but it was so cute. It was the cutest thing ever to see my six-year-old learning to read. So he's sounding out these words and he's reading my business card and he says, Matra Jones, and it's so cute again, Matra Jones, Vice President of the United States. <laughs> he, just, he just decided he was going to just add that in and insert that. That's the cutest. That's probably the closest I've ever thought about anything close to the presidency of the United States. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can save that question for Bernard. <laughs> I disconnect when respect is no longer being served. I disconnect when people don't feel valued. I disconnect when we don't embrace each other's differences. I don't know what more you want me to say. I'm living my future right now. I believe um, our best days are yet to come at OCCC. And I feel very prepared, very honored, and excited about the work um, that is before me. I look forward to creating tremendous success um, shepherding stu students uh, to uh, their chosen professions and, and, and ensuring that they accomplish their dreams. And I look forward to doing that with the Board of Regents, distinguished faculty, tremendous staff, and our beautiful students. OCCC is a very special place and it's not hard to see why people fall in love with OCCC. And so to be at the helm of such a beautiful place, inside and out, um, to be at the helm is special for me. It is so special, and so I'm living my future right now at the helm of OCCC.